Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath. Now these are the ones that got the, the burdens of carrying the furniture. The altars, the tables, the, uh, the ark. From among the sons of Levi, after their families, by the house of their fathers. Okay, now... Chapter 1, we saw that uh, the children of Israel, minus the Levites, were, we'll go back to Numbers 1 real quick, look at these ages. Numbers chapter 1, the ages were oh, 20 years old and upward, upward, only able to go into the army and serve. Last night, we looked at the uh, Levites. The family of Levi, and they were counted a month old and upward. Now, chapter 4, we're talking about the actual service of the Levite family. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old. All that enter into the host, the counting, to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. The Levites age for service was 30 years old and they retired at 50. 20 years. Now that's remarkable because let's go to John 8 57. Gospel of John chapter 8 verse 57. We'll see some scripture here. I mean, everyone, the Old Testament is boring. No. Not when you read it with the New Testament. And if I unseparate my pages here, stuck together. 857, Gospel of John. And Jesus is having a debate with the Pharisees, the scribes. They're talking about Abraham. And look what's said here. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Of all the ages, I mean, you're looking at approximately 32 years, and then you go back, what was it, 3,000 years, Abraham. And the number that they choose is a number that matches Numbers chapter 4, the retirement age of 50. He said, well, that doesn't mean nothing. That's not important. Okay. Let's go to Luke chapter 3, verse 23. Luke 3, 23. We have a remarkable statement here of a man that is of Judah. And yet, according to Hebrews, he's our great high priest. Luke 3, 23. I got another page here that's stuck. Page stuck here. Okay, three. No, yeah, I'm stuck. That's what I mean. The Bible's words. Okay, here we go. Three twenty-three. I'm sorry, my page is stuck in this Bible. Okay, talking about Jesus, the High Priest of our salvation, 
did away with all the priests. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as supposed the son of Joseph, which is the son of Heli. And you go through all this generation, then you'll see Aaron, uh, Abraham, that they complained about. And then you'll see that he is the, the son of Adam. Remarkable two ages that you see in the Bible, and they both match numbers as far as the qualification of the priesthood. And Jesus Christ, though he is not of Levi, of Judah, Hebrews says he's of the priests, offering that one sacrifice forever and sat down at the right hand of, the God, of God the Father. Now, he didn't make it to 50 years old. He died about 33 and a half years old, according to the scriptures. In Numbers 4, verse 4, Thus shall be the service of the sons of Kohath, in the tabernacle of the congregation, about the most holy thing. Now, everything that Jesus has done has fulfilled Numbers 4, for now, during the church age. Numbers 4 is not going on presently while the church age. It will happen in the tribulation when the temple's back, and it will happen in the millennium when the temple's back with Jesus. Right now, it's not happening. Jesus has fulfilled the work. And when the camp set it forward, it's time to move. We're in the wilderness. We are not in the promised land. We're going to pick up, we're going to move, we're going to stop, and we're going to unpack we're going to pick up, we're going to move, we're going to stop, we're going to unpack. So those times when, when that fire moves, that cloudy pillar moves, this is what's going to happen, happen. And there's a list, I believe, in Deuteronomy where they did stop and go and stop and go. So if you hate moving as much as I hate moving, we are looking at Numbers chapter 4 when God says, okay, it's time to move. Let's go. And it's done more than once. More done than five times. More than ten times. And unlike moving the times I've had moved, nothing is lost because it's all holy. That's remarkable. That's a miracle. There's no unpacking. And say, well, where's this? Well, we must have left it back. No, there's none of that. You're not going to leave behind something that God says is holy. So and when they can't set forward, Aaron, the high priest, because he's going to be the high priest into almost to the promised land, shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and cover the ark of the testimony with it. That inner veil that Christ rents, they take that down and they put it over the ark. Covers the ark. Except for, and I don't understand even when it happened then, if the children of Israel worked on this furniture, they saw it. They may not have saw it. Maybe just those two men that God appointed for us. But once that tabernacle is set up and has been sanctified and the priest has been concentrated, no one will ever see this furniture ever but the priests that go in the holy place. And even when the high priest went in, unless that place is lit in by God, no one has ever seen the furniture. So when they pack up and go, we're going to see that all this furniture inside the holy place, inside the most holy place, that those uh, ram skins dyed red, those badger skins, and all the covers of that are going to be used to cover the furniture. And right now, the Ark of the Covenant has now been covered by that veil that Christ rent. When Christ rent that veil, you take that veil down, you cover the Ark, you would be able to see the Ark. Because the Bible says when, when, when the temple was opened in heaven, what did you see? There's no veil covering that Ark no more. And shall put therein, thereon, the covering of badger skin. Here comes all of it again. Everything we've done in Exodus is repeated again in Numbers. There's something special about that tabernacle. There's something special about that temple. Because it's in heaven. We will see this in heaven. And shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue. And shall put in the staves thereof. That's what they're going to carry it on. 
And upon the table of showbread they shall spread a cloth of blue and put thereon the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers to cover with all. You're not going to lose the covers like you open up your, your cabinet and you got, you know, a couple wear tops and no bowls and you got the bowls and you got no tops. Not here. The covers are covered with all and the continual bread shall be thereon. So if it's not time to change that bread on the Sabbath, when you pack up that table, that bread is on that table too. And they shall spread upon the cloth of scarlet and cover the same with a covering of badger skin and shall put in the staves thereon. The staves are carried by cord. And they shall take a cloth of blue and cover the candlestick of the light and his lamps and his tongs and his snuff dishes and all the oil vessels, there, oil, oil vessels thereof wherewith they minister unto it. Everything is covered. There's no boxes. It's covered with cloth. And they shall put it and all the vessels thereof within a covering of badger skin and shall put it on, put it upon a bar. Hmm? Put it upon a bar. So this candlestick and all the pictures there are, it's a bar and it's to be carried. And upon the golden altar, they shall spread a cloth of blue and cover it with a covering of badger skin. Everything gets a badger skin. And shall put to the staves thereof. Now you put the staves in that. We're getting ready to move. You don't put it on a cart like David did in the Philistine. That's not how God prescribed. And they shall take all the instruments of the ministry, wherewith they minister in the sanctuary, and put them in a cloth of blue, and cover them with a covering of badger skin, and shall put them on a bar. And they shall take away the ashes of the altar, brazen altar, and spread purple cloth thereon. And they shall put upon it all the vessels thereof, wherewith they minister about it, even the censers, the flesh hooks, and the shovels, and the basins, all the vessels of the altar, they shall spread upon the spread upon it a covering of badger skin, and put it to the staves, put it of it, put to the staves of it. Now this is Aaron and his sons doing this. There's no Kohath yet. And when Aaron and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary. And all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is to set forward, they're moving out. After that, the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it. But they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. Let's go to 2 Samuel 6.6. 6. 2 Samuel 6.6. 6. Now, David is doing it wrong. The Philistines has brought the art on the cart. That's not what we read here. It's supposed to be staves. But watch here. God's allowed this a little bit such a way. But 2 Samuel 6.6. 6, and when it came to Nyakin's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God to hold it. Hold of it. For the oxen shook it. It stumbled. Oh, it's going to fall. I'll brace it. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. Now go back to the Numbers chapter 4. They shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. What's the only thing they're going to touch? The bars or the staves, and that's it. You can't even look upon it. It's been covered. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, this will be stopped when David 
builds that temporary dwelling in Jerusalem when Solomon finishes the temple. And they say they pull the staves out and they're seen without unto this day. But all through the wilderness journey, we're going to read every time it stopped and go, we're going to go through this. So when you read the pillar got up and the children of Israel went forth, you had to un unpack, you had to pack everything in that temple, that tabernacle. And it all had to be covered, and it all had to be covered correctly. And to the office of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest pertained the oil for the lamb. So he's in charge of the oil. And the sweet incense. He's in charge of that incense. And the daily meat offering. And the anointing oil. And the oversight in charge thereof, overseer of all the tabernacle. And of all that therein is in the sanctuary and the vessels thereof. Eliezer's office is in charge of stock. Better not run out of oil, Eliezer. It's not your dad's job. It's not the high priest's job. It's your job. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Cut ye not off the tribe of the families of the Kohite. Now remember, this is, this is Moses and Aaron's family we read last night. Their father is of the Kohites. Aaron is chosen of the priestly family, but yet Moses is still in this family. This special family out of the Levites who had this exceptional, special regard for God's service. He says, don't you cut them off. Don't you get rid of them. Because you ain't going nowhere without them. But, this, but thus do unto them that they may live and not die. When they approach under the most holy things, Aaron and his son shall go in and appoint to every one to his service and to his burden. So the men line up. Aaron and his son come up and says, you come here. Get on that side on those staves. You come over here. You stay on this side of these staves. Okay, ready? Pick it up. Put it on your shoulders. You come over here. You grab this end of the pole. Come over here. You grab this end of the pole. Aaron and his sons will give the orders to the people of what did it do. And they can't change. Oh, I don't want, I want to carry the ark. No. That's prescribed by Aaron and his sons. You get a pole. I don't want a pole. No, you get a pole. Aaron's in charge of this movie. Point to them, everyone, to his service and to his burden. Now, can you imagine if that ark was heavy? Oh, man, I don't want to carry that. You better. You have to. You've been assigned. But they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered, lest they die. You can't touch it, and don't you go in there when Aaron and his sons are covering it up. So you come, you're at the campfire at the end of the day. Hey, go ahead. Come here. And I, whatever his, somebody of his family. You call him. Say, what's that ark look like? I have no idea. All I see is the staves and cloth. You mean you've never seen it? Am I alive? Yeah, I've never seen it. All that we see in here has never been seen by the children of Israel, but the priests. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take also the sum of the sons of Gershon. This is the other child of, of uh, Levi. There's three of them. Throughout the houses of their fathers by their families. From 30 years old and upward unto 50 years old, same age, shalt thou number them. All that enter in to perform the service to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. So there is an age of the priest. And Jesus began 30 years old as the priest. But he was of Judah. This is the service of the family of Gershonites to serve and for burdens. And God calls this service of the tabernacle carrying it, cleaning, putting it. He calls it a burden because he knows it's heavy. They shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle. Bear, have them all. Fold them just right. 
If the military expects you to make your folded cot way you're supposed to do it, you better believe God wants these men to do it right. And the tabernacle of the congregation, his covering, and the coverings of badger skin that's above upon it. The badger skin shows up much. And the hanging from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. I'm not sure if that's the one in the, the holy place or the one at, out, outside in the courtyard. The hangings of the court. That's the ones on the outside. All around the court. The hangings of the door, the gate. Are, okay, that, okay. So that first hanging the door, that's the holy place right by the labor. This one is where the people come to. The door, the gate, the court. Which is by the tabernacle, by the altar, roundabout. Okay, so we're at the courtyard now of the curtains. And their cords, or their ropes, they get them off. All the instruments of their service, and all that is made for them, so shall they serve. So their job is the curtains. An appointment, I, I, I'm going to assume that they get rips and tears, and I would assume that it's also their job to mend or replace. And appointed to Aaron and his son shall be all the service of the sons of the Gershonites, in all their burdens, and in all their service. And you shall appoint unto them in charge of their burdens. Again, Aaron and his son step up and Gershonites say, that's your section, that's your job, that curtain is yours, that gate is yours. And I don't want to hear you don't like it, I don't want to hear that you want that. And appoint Aaron his son shall be all the service of the sons of Gershonites in their burdens, in all their service. And ye shall appoint unto them the charge of their burdens. This is the service of the families of the sons of Gershon and the tabernacle of the congregation, and their charge, their your orders, shall be under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. So Ithamar, that other son of Aaron, he's in charge of the Gershon. And their families. And the curtains. That's his job. See God has an orderly way. God has people in charge. And people under the people that are in charge. And a responsibility. People don't like authority. Authority is in the Bible. And Aaron answers to God. <laughs> As for the sons of Merari, the third family under Levi, thou shalt number them after their family, by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years, there's that age again, shall thou number them, every one that enters into service, to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now isn't it? You got to think about something right here. There's no birthday celebrating the Bible, but yet, the few birthdays that there are, there are people that die. Bible does not say celebrate birthdays. And in fact, the Bible puts against strongly against it. And yet they do know their birth, they know how old they are. You can know your age without celebrating your birthday. A man woke up, Moses or Aaron is going to come up to, Sir, I, I'm 29 years old, I'm not 30 yet. They would come up to their own, I'm 49, I get one more year left. They know their dates, they just don't celebrate them. And this is the charge of their burden, 31. According to all the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, the boards of the tabernacle, they made up the, the, the holy and the most holy place. The boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof. We read about those bars that put those boards together. And the pillars thereof. And the sockets thereof. Those are the things that go in the ground. And the pillars of the court round about. And their sockets. And their pins. And their cords or ropes. With all their instruments. With all their service. And by name. You shall reckon the instruments of the charge of the burden. You see those pins over there? Elijah, you got that. Those ropes over there? Eliphaz, you got that. 
You that go, uh, Joe Dev, you get all those sockets out of the ground. This one's given by name. Your name is on that job. <laughs> There's no name given to carrying the ark. Ashuba, you get on the left side, and Aruba, you get on the on the right side. It's not like that. But when it comes to these boards and these pins and of the Merarites, it's given by name. That's interesting. That's does that not happen so far? You shall reckon the instruments of the of the charge of their burdens. This is the service of the families of the sons of Merari, according to all the service in the tabernacle of the congregation under the hand of Ithamar. Ooh, he's he's in charge of two families, the son of Aaron, the priest. So Aaron's sons, though priests, have order and have charge. And Moses and Aaron and all the chief of the congregation numbered the sons of Kohath after their families and their after the house of their fathers. Now here's 30 years old and upward unto 50 years old. No one under 30, no one under 50. Every, huh? Older than 50. Everyone that enters into the service for the work of the tabernacle in the congregation. And those that were numbered of them by their families were 2,750. 2,750. Now I, I put up on my YouTube and the video, a, a short little video with all this laid out. I'm working on printing it right now, but it's, I got to work on that a little bit more. But it's charts and instruments to help you see the populations and the polls and the census of these children of numbers and those that were numbered the families 2750 these were they that were numbered the families of Kohites all that might do service in the tabernacle of the congregation which Moses and Aaron did number according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses so everyone counts those that were numbered the sons of Gershon, according to their families, and by the house of their fathers, from 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, everyone that entereth into the service for the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, even those that were numbered of them throughout their families by the house of their fathers, were 2,630. Now, what is that about? 80 less than the Kohites. These are they that were numbered the families of their sons of Goshen, of all their might, excuse me, and all that might do the service in the tabernacle of the congregation, whom Moses and Aaron did number according to the commandment of the Lord. And those that were numbered the families of son of Merari, throughout their families, by the house of their fathers. Now couldn't God just say, okay, here's Here's the Kohites, 2,750. Here's the Gershons, 200, 2,600. I mean, couldn't. Every word. Man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And those that were numbered the families of the sons of Merari throughout their families, by the house of their father. Many people have never even read this. Don't even know this is in here. This Bible goes back to, let's see, I'm not boasting. This Bible goes back to, It's stuck again, man. Lord, don't want me. 2000? 2001. And not only have I written, well, actually, my other Bible, too. 2001. 2001, I set out to start reading the Bible all the way through. And it's not just six years. I, I've read through this countless times in my own study. Every word. And from 30 years old upward unto 50 years old, everyone that entered into the service for the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, even those that were numbered of them after their families, were 3,200. There's a lot of Merari over the Kohalites and the Gershonites. They ranked the top as far as the poles. 
There's a lot of curtains. There's a lot of outside service. These be those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Moriah, whom Moses and Aaron numbered, according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thou shalt not. I can do all things through Christ with strength. This is the word of the Lord. And all those that were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the chief of Israel numbered, after their families, after the house of their fathers, from 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old, everyone that came to do the service of the ministry and the service of the burden of the tabernacle of the congregation, even those that were numbered among them, all of them, 8,504 score, 8,508. A score is 20. And you take multiplied of the number before that score. According to the commandment of the Lord, they numbered by the hand of Moses. Moses did it with his hand. Everyone according to his service. They have a job to do. And according to the, his burden, what God has given them. <coughs> Thus were they numbered of him as the Lord commanded Moses. <coughs> 